up, everybody? Welcome to the iPro vlog. As always, I'm Jordan Smith, VP of Sales and Marketing, and I've got my fantastic, smart co-host, Patrick Laughlin, with me, CEO of iPro. What's up, Pat? How are you? What's up, Joe? How are you today? I'm doing I, good. I see, I see that you've been raiding my closet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are kind of, we're a little twinning today, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Twinning to winning, right? <laughs> Mix it up a little bit. Yeah, Dude, absolutely. Different shades of plaid, so. <laughs> Hey, this is perfect though, especially with our topic today, which is aligning your senior team. So Pat and I aligned our wardrobes. You see what I did there, mm, Pat? I uh, did. <laughs> but we want to talk a little bit about aligning your senior team and how important it is uh, just to move the organization forward. Yeah, no, I mean, nothing can, nothing causes mission failure uh, quicker uh, and, and is more destructive than uh, sort of senior leaders not being on the same page with each other. Yeah, especially, you know, those have, those have been in different organizations that are watching this. I mean, how often have you been a part of an organization where you seem like either the direction shifted every single, you know, month or quarter, according to what new shiny thing was in front of them, or just a couple of them, you know, just getting different answers from people. So um, we wrote actually a great blog about this that uh, uh, we've got a link to on the website. So we're only going to hit the highlights here, but I'm um, digging into that thing because that's that's one of the better pieces of content that our team has written um, in a long time. But um, let's talk about some steps. I, I want to give you guys kind of some very actionable things that you can do uh, to align your senior team. So, well, right. and I, th I think before we get into the steps, Jordan, it's it's important to continue to sort of talk about the symptoms and and the the consequences of not doing this because uh, I mean. When, when senior leadership alignment's off, it has huge ripple effects uh, and really does affect the whole company. And yet, you know, if even just one or two employees feels disconnected from the mission, uh, that's a huge strain on productivity. So yeah. um, it, I think it's really important that um, leaders invest their time to create alignment. If, if there's a disagreement, figure out a way to compromise, figure out a way to get on the same page um, because the health of your company depends on it. Um, so, and, and, you know, I, I think uh, sort of knowing how critical that is, you start, you sort of start asking yourself a series of questions, you know, and uh, you, you know, those as well as I do, you know, what's the real goal, right? Are, are you in this for the long run? Are you trying to build something for a hundred years or are you really looking to, to sort of uh, build something with an exit strategy? You know, uh, what, what is your company's guiding purpose? Are you clear on that? Uh, and and you, you do a great job of um, making sure that gets communicated a lot. Well, the why, the why is often more important than the what. So the same thing that you said just a second ago, if you as, if you and your leadership team aren't, aren't on the same page as far as why you're doing what you're doing and what that long-term goal is, um, there's no way that it can be effectively communicated with the rest of the people in the company. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If you're not really, really cl clear on why you're doing what you're doing and, and uh, you know, sort of the, the thing that, uh, you know, is moving you towards self-actualization, uh, yeah, how in the world are you going to get, um, you know, sort of a, a frontline employee to, 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 or team member to, to pull in that direction with you. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that, you know, really that is the, the basis of culture, the, the core values, the, share, the set of shared beliefs uh, and sort of a, a shared purpose are the things that build um, great cultures. And you know, everybody's sort of familiar with the, the idea that culture eats strategy for lunch. Uh, lots of great plans get thrown off when, uh, when you don't have uh, people working toward those plans together. So yeah, culture is super important. Well, yeah. And, and, and again, you know, culture comes directly from that why. So build out a culture that aligns with that guiding purpose that Pat talked about. We talk about vision all the time. Um, you know, and that's what we're talking about here is, is that why is your vision for the future? And, and, you know, don't only be concentrated on building your sales and marketing processes or your production processes according to that why, that guiding purpose that we're talking about. But develop a culture around it um, that rewards people in the organization 
um, for uh, winning, whatever winning looks like, you know? Um, yeah, and I, I think that's the sort of the next important question to ask is what does winning look like for you and your organization? And making it very clear, uh, you know, uh, whether it is uh, what does winning at that role look like or what does winning look like for uh, the team as a whole? I mean, you, you, you in, a, in a sales role, Jordan, you know exactly what that looks like uh, every day, you know? Uh, so, and so how do you... How do you use that idea of winning to motivate salespeople that work for you? Yeah, and and you know, you're right. For certain individuals, it's going to be really easy. For somebody that's actually producing the work, or you know, somebody who's like sometimes those those what winning looks like is a, a, a little rougher and a little grayer. Which is which is again why it's important that you guys are aligned on on what each each thing looks like. You know? Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, you know, m money motivates to a point, but it doesn't motivate uh, everyone the same way. So uh, sort of having that idea of what winning looks like outside of the dollars, yep. uh, I think is really important. And, and, and I think that you can't, you can't build a winning culture without some sort of accountability and alignment plan. Yep, um, that's the next thing. Well, and, and you know, we sort of have this belief that uh, alignment is the thing that leaders do and accountability is what te is how is what team members do for leaders. Uh, alignment works from top down and uh, 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 accountability works from the bottom up. Uh, you know, it's that idea of coalition building for leadership. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, once again, uh, I've said it before and I'll, I'll reiterate it. Uh, I don't know anybody as, as good as you are at, at sort of um, bottom up accountability. You're always the guy that's telling me, uh, hey, you're weak here and we need to, uh, we need to do this. Uh, Talk a little bit about that accountability from the bottom up. Um, well, it's, you know, again, it, it just goes back to once you know what the vision is, um, you know, it's it's making sure that you are communicating with your people that it's okay to hold me accountable. I, I do that because the leaders above me in our organization, Pat and RJ, have made that clear that, you know, if you don't hold me accountable, it's sometimes hard for me to see if I'm veering off what our vision is. Because we're all humans and we all get attracted by the shiny thing that's in front of our face at that moment. We all read a, a certain book that tells us we need to do things a certain way because this giant organization did it. And we say, oh, cool, well, we're doing it all. Okay, we can have those discussions, but let's make sure that we're all on the same page about that um, so that there's not any conflict from a senior leadership position uh, that's going to trickle down to the, the individual employees who who we just told, you know, what our big vision is and why we do what we do. Well, and I, I think that there's an important point in that, too, is that leaders move faster than sometimes uh, their their teams can. Um, you know, it's it's really easy for one of us to, to read something over the weekend and say, I'm going to redo everything from top down. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a, a, a lot of guys will, will just do it, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it sort of breeds this um, uh, organizational like uh, chaos, number one, but it also, it just wears people out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they can't ever feel like they're making progress towards something because the, the goal is constantly changing. So that's yeah. important too. That's a good point. We just keep changing the goalpost. And another thing that helps with that, which is our last tip on this, is setting regular check-ins, right? Having having one-on-one -on -one meetings with different members of your leadership team. Um, having a group meeting. It, every week we sit down as a leadership team and, and look at issues and look at ideas and try to figure out if, you know, if, if not necessarily if our why needs to be adjusted, but the route that we go to get to that why needs to be tweaked a little bit here or there on a, on a regular basis. We've, we've, we've got those big check-in points, right? Those yearly meetings where we do decide if we need to change the vision according to where the organization is going. But having those in-between intermediate kind of, kind of check-ins to, to just make sure that you're aligned with, with everybody else's important especially these days when I know we're still fragmented as an office from the perspective of we're not in the same room uh, very often anymore. Well, and, and yeah, I, and I think that the easiest meetings to cancel are, are some of these, uh, you know, sort of fuzzier meetings. Uh, you know, it, it's, 
it's easy to think, hey, I'll, I'll skip out on uh, a leadership meeting because I've got some other appointment that's very pressing. Uh, or, you know, particularly uh, one-on-ones with team members, you know, I mean, it's easy to sort of say, well, that can, that can be moved. But the truth is, yeah, those are the most important things that we as leaders do. And um, they, uh, they help build that uh, alignment and culture, not only with senior leadership, but all the way down the chain. So. No, you're absolutely right. Those are always the ones on the calendar that you look at and you say, you know what, Jordan, you're doing a great job. Don't, we don't have to make, you're doing a good job. Anything you want to talk about? Not really. Okay, cool. Well, let's, let's cancel that. I know you're busy. No, have those regular check-in meetings. We talked about accountability, um, you know, is, is kind of something from the ground up. I'm telling you, a lot of the best ideas in your organization are, are a lot of the best definitions for, for why are also going to come from those folks. We might move quicker than a lot of other people that we're in charge of in the organization, but it doesn't mean that there's not good ideas uh, and, and different things that, that, that they have for you as a leader that bubbles from the bottom up. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't have any other tips to share on this, Joe. I think that, um, you know, there, there's a pretty clear um, way to, to sort of uh, make sure that your senior team stays aligned. And, but that being said, it doesn't mean that our way is uh, perfect. We, we struggle with it just like everybody else. So Yeah, absolutely. But uh, just to recap real quick, because I think some of those steps are important. Figure out your why. What's your guiding purpose? What's your vision? Um, enhance the understanding of your organization's why. Communicate that with everybody. Don't only build processes and, and sell structures and that type of stuff for that, um, but also develop your culture around that. Hire people, fire people, um, work with vendors, all of those organizations, all of those people that um, have an understanding of your why and maybe their why is really similar to yours. Work on finding those people. Um, define what winning looks like and celebrate those wins, even the small ones. Um, those, those kind of check-ins on a regular basis. Uh, set those to not only hold your people responsible, but so they can hold you accountable. And the last thing, which, which is kind of the overarching thing of this, is, is once you've got it defined, communicate it. Communicate it often. You, you know, you, you think you, you say something a couple times and it's always going to stick in somebody's head. It doesn't. I've got to hear things eight or nine times before it really gets through and we all do. So if anything, over communicate that vision, not only with your senior leadership team, but with the people in your organization. And I know that it will deliver dividends. Absolutely. All right. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and we earned it, uh, subscribe. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, we've got a great blog about this. The link is going to be attached uh, everywhere that we're posting this. Go read this article. It goes into, we went kind of an inch deep on each one of these things, but they go into a lot more detail. And um, uh, tell us what you're struggling with. Comment with what you like about these videos, what you don't like. And uh, until next time, thanks so much, Pat. Peace, peeps.